Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It's nice to finally be uploading something for the first time I think in about five months it's been. I have been busy doing my fourth year electives and studying for and taking the step two CK and CS, so those are both done now. And so those have all kind of been keeping me busy in the meantime and so that's why I've been putting making my videos a little bit on the back burner. But I have another video for you today and hopefully some that are coming up in the near future um, for you guys to learn from and hopefully enjoy. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I wanted to make one about studying for step one from the beginning of medical school. I feel like I get a decent amount of emails uh, from people who are asking me what they can do before they go to the island, particularly Car Caribbean medical students, uh, that's why, why I say the island, but those people will email me saying what can I do in order to make sure that by the time I'm done second year of medical school I'll actually be ready to take step two, or step one, sorry, step two is on the brain, so that um, they don't have to spend so much time studying for step one. And if you guys have been watching me for a long time, you will know that it took me a long time in order to be ready to sit for step one after I actually finished on the island because I had a lot of catching up to do. And so there are a lot of videos already on YouTube about people talking about how they study for step one. And so I thought of instead of making a video telling you how I studied for step one, I would talk to you about things that I wish I did in the first two years leading up to my dedicated step one period so that you guys can learn how to start preparing for step one much uh, earlier than your actual dedicated period and I think this is valuable information particularly for IMGs because I feel like a lot of times people end up leaving their step one studies to dedicated period and they focus a lot on their shelf exams during uh, their clinical rotation or their basic sciences which is obviously important um, but there are some things that you can do uh, and tips that I have to get you on the right path so that by the time second year is done you can actually you know feel like you're in a good place when you start really hitting you world hard. So the way I'm going to break down my recommendations is going to be by semester in the basic sciences, so your semester is one through four. But before I go into that, I just want to uh, preface with a little bit of overall information. And so this might seem obvious to you, but my recommendation to be prepared for step one is to start studying for step one on day one of medical school. Now I don't mean that you should immediately buy a UWorld subscription and start memorizing first aid every single day. But just when you go into your first day of medical school, have this exam in mind and know that you're working towards not only being able to pass your shelf exams and um, help your patients down the line, but you're working down or you're working towards doing well on this giant board exam that you have. And when you have that in the back of your mind, when you're studying, then you, you really have an intentional study session every day and don't be lazy with your studying and, and put it off, you know, to one or two weeks before your monthly block exams, but rather every day, every lecture that you have, go home and study with the intent of keeping what you learn in your brain, which of course isn't possible to keep everything in your brain uh, because there's just the sheer volume of it is a lot. However, if you have that mindset, that's what you need to carry with you throughout the next two years uh, as you go through your basic sciences. And to add to that, I have four resources that I always recommend to anyone who emails me wondering what they should use during the basic sciences. And this is, of course, just a personal preference. There are so many different resources out there now, especially different video series and different um, review books, but these are the ones that really work for me that I recommend because I know that I've used them. So the first one is obviously going to be first aid. I mean, every medical student knows to purchase a copy of first aid but I recommend having a copy of that uh, a PDF specifically on your laptop uh, before you're even your first day of medical school and so the second resource that I have for you is actually three resources combined it's called the board review series books and I use those books for anatomy biochem like embryology and physiology but if you can get anatomy and physiology BRS books those two uh, review books really got me through those courses and helping me prepare for those shelf exams. Then the third resource is Pathoma. This might not be news to you, however, if you are starting medical school, Pathoma is a great series of pathology videos and also an accompanying little review book um, that will really help you for your pathology course. And then again, no surprise here, Sketchy Micro. Uh, Sketchy Medical is the brand that produces videos. Now they have videos for Microbio. 
pathology and pharmacology, I believe, and who knows what else is in the works, but I would prioritize sketchy micro videos um, and watch those while you're actually doing the course if you have time because those are super, super helpful. Okay, so now that I have that intro section out of the way, I'm going to dive in for my recommendations semester by semester or for the basic sciences. So it's your first semester of medical school and you're transitioning from the way that you were studying in your undergraduate degree into how you're studying for medical school now. And it's a really big change and a really big learning curve. So I think that the most important part of the first semester of medical school is just to really get familiar with your study method and handling the workload and the volume of everything that is being thrown at you. So I don't think that focusing on step one is as important during this time. However, my recommendation for this semester is, like I mentioned earlier, to have a PDF of first aid on your laptop and have it open at all times, especially when you're in your lectures, so that you can cross-reference whatever you're seeing on the board or on your lecture slides with what you're actually looking at in first aid. So for example, if you are studying uh, GI or abdominal anatomy, for example, then pull up the GI section in first aid, scroll to the anatomy uh, of the ab abdominal anatomy section and cross-reference and like skim through that, you know, while you're in your lecture uh, or cross-reference at the same time so you can see and differentiate what's relevant for your shelf exam and what's relevant for step one. And so if you do this throughout the year, not just your first semester, then by the time you finish your second year of medical school and you start your dedicated period for uh, step one, there isn't going to be any, there aren't going to be any surprises. You will have already read through pretty much all the pages in first aid along with your studying for your shelf exams and the basic sciences. And then as you do that, um, the material that you see in first aid may also prompt you to ask questions for further clarification on material that either wasn't covered in class or was skimmed over or material that you didn't necessarily understand, but you, you saw, hey, like this is in first aid, I need to know this for step one, I didn't get a clear picture of what's going on here, um, that's your chance to you know ask your teacher that question so that you can uh, make sure that that material is really well understood because the board's relevant material is the most important. My second tip for your first semester of medical school is to start getting familiarized with board style multiple choice questions. Now I don't think that at this point you need to subscribe or get a UWorld subscription. However, I do recommend Firecracker. I think they have some really great questions that are also really tailored for each of your courses uh, in basic sciences for their shelf exams. So that those will really help you, um, you know, integrate what you're learning on the day to day and, and get that stuff into your brain while also getting you familiarized with board style questions. And so I think Firecracker is a great place to start. USMLERX is another QBank that I also recommend if you're feeling like you want to dive in further with questions then you can also get a subscription for that in the first semester. Okay so now semester one is over. Take everything that I said with a grain of salt but those are my recommendations. Now you're moving into the second semester of medical school so you've hopefully kind of started to get the hang of things and learned what type of study methods work best for you and the only different recommendation that I have for this semester is now to make sure that you really are starting to familiarize yourself with the board style questions. At this point I still think it is a little early to get a UWorld subscription because there's going to be so much material that you haven't learned and haven't covered in class yet but the USMLERX QBank that I mentioned earlier is a really great option for this time or just keep doing firecracker questions. Now a lot of Caribbean schools don't actually have a four month or however many month summer break between first year and second year. So for a lot of students, they're just gonna be going directly from their second semester into their third semester. And so once third semester is around, you know, you're in your second year of medical school, step one is right around the corner. So by your third semester, I highly recommend uh, being in a habit of doing UWorld questions every single day. And that doesn't mean you have to do, you know, a whole block of UWorld, que UWorld questions every day, but at least do some UWorld questions, whether it's 10 questions or, you know, 30 questions or however, however you want to divide it up. You know, if you do less on the weekdays because you're studying from your class material and catch up on the weekends or vice versa. I just strongly recommend that at this point you are consistently doing those USMLE style boards questions because now it's really, really important for you to get comfortable with the style of them 
and also be able to um, time yourself, particularly for the subjects that you've already covered. You know, it's understandable if you're still doing tutor mode uh, that, you know, time or question blocks that aren't timed at this point because um, there's still a lot of material that you haven't learned. But for those uh, courses that you have already completed, like physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, for those subject questions, I recommend starting to try and get yourself in a rhythm of doing timed mixed blocks. And so my tips for the fourth semester are the same as the third semester. You know, second year is all about really just getting familiar with um, or getting in a habit of doing those questions every day. And then also, this is usually around the time that students are taking their microbio, pathoma, and pharmacology courses. And so I would recommend, if you have the time, and I know not everyone does, but if you do, I think it's really valuable for you to watch those pathoma videos videos and watch those sketchy micro videos when you're actually learning the material in class. I didn't actually know about Sketchy Micro because it wasn't as popular at the time when I was on the island. However, I did those videos when it was my dedicated step one time and I remember thinking, man, I wish that I had done this when I was actually taking that course. And likewise with pathology, I had done some of those videos but not all of them. Um, and I remember thinking, man, I wish I had already watched all of these videos so that in my dedicated time I was reviewing and I could watch those videos for a second time around and um, be drawing from memory as opposed to seeing these ideas and the way that they're taught in those videos for the first time. Particularly for Sketchy Micro because they're really, um, the principle of their videos is based on visual recall. And so if you've already looked at all those Sketchy Micro images in your second year of medical school, then a couple months down the line when you're studying in your dedicated time, it's actually just a matter of you know, oh, I've already seen this, like I remember that part, as opposed to seeing those images for the first time and trying to, you know, force those ideas to stay in your head in a shorter period of time. And by the middle of your fourth semester to the end of your fourth semester, you should definitely be doing your QBank questions in timed mode and mixed mode, at least for all of the uh, course materials that you've already completely covered. So I'd say that if you could be halfway through or more of your UWorld QBank by the end of your fourth semester, then that's a really, really great place to be. And you'll be very prepared compared to some other students um, who haven't implemented uh, this strategy throughout their first two years. So those are my specific recommendations for how you could study for your first and second year of medical school to prepare for step one. But one thing before I summarize all of those points is that I wanted to mention is that I think the hardest part, for me at least, during the first two years of med school was I felt like I was constantly torn between studying what was relevant for boards, so step one, versus what's relevant for your shelf exams. Because you have tons of material that's constantly being thrown at you that you need to know in order to pass and do well on those shelf exams. But not all of it is relevant for step one, of course. And so, Learning that material well is ultimately going to make you a better doctor. It's going to help you have a better foundation um, for you know future exams down the line and practicing uh, in the clinical setting, of course. But my biggest recommendation to you is that as you study and as you go along and as you cross-reference the lectures that you're seeing in class with the first aid PDF on our laptop, I would say that every day when you go home and study those lectures, I would recommend learning and studying the material that is relevant for step one first and well. And once you have covered that material, then move on to the material that is relevant for your shelf exams. So now that I have said that, I will quickly summarize everything that we talked about in this video. So the big takeaways are one, cross-reference the material that you're learning in class with a PDF or hard copy if you want of first aid. Two, the earlier you familiarize yourself with USMLE style board questions, the better off you will be down the line. Three, Sketchy Medical and Pathoma are really great resources and I would recommend prioritizing those as well as the other ones that I listed. And four, as you study daily, try to focus on the material that is relevant for boards first 
and then study once you've you know solidified that information in your mind then continue on reviewing the material that's relevant for for your shelf exams so that brings me to the end of today's video i hope it was helpful for you i do get this question a lot and i do think there are already a lot of videos um, online where people talk about how they study for step one in their dedicated period so i thought that this might be a different uh, way to look at studying for step one and i definitely wish that i had this information going into medical school because um, I think I would have been a lot better off. But of course, take everything that I said with, you know, some grains of salt because how I uh, recommend studying may not be the best way for you. Uh, but I just wanted to put this information out there in case you were, you know, feeling clueless and you needed some advice and some recommendations of what direction you should go in starting from the first day of medical school. All right, so I will leave the video there for today. I look forward to seeing your comments down below. Let me know if you agree with my suggestions, if you disagree, if you have any more suggestions for other people who are going into this process of medical school. Uh, I would love to hear your opinions. And uh, other than that, I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys all have a great week and happy studying. Bye.